This episode is sponsored by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and our accessories at zenroclothingco.com and be sure to use offer code SOCRATES at checkout for 20% off select items. Also, if you're not into uh, spending the money, just check out the Zenro Radio playlist. ZenRealClothingCo.com, music for your everyday. This episode also is sponsored by The Pornia Bakery. If you're located in the Pornia area of Scarborough, Toronto, be sure to check out The Pornia Bakery, say what's up to Arvel, and uh, pick up a donut or two. Bake daily, crafted with love. This episode also is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the podcasting platform of choice. It's the one that me and Vish use, and um, is great, you know, if you're uh, looking to start that DIY podcast yourself definitely check out podbean use uh the link podbean.com slash socratic gamers and gain one month of unlimited podcasting for free test it out build that content uh anyone could podcast right vish yep start a start a podcast and uh get your ideas out there all right enjoy the episode all right so i know you didn't check this out yesterday uh because you went to bed early but uh, Francis Ngannou won the heavyweight championship yesterday. That's why I wanted to watch. Yeah, that guy. Um, so, so the the only reason why I wanted to watch it is because he has the craziest come up story. Okay. So, all right. So, he worked in Cameroon. It, like, no, he didn't work there. He was born there, and he worked in the salt mines of Cameroon. Oh wow! And then he was like, "I need to build a better life for myself." So he escaped to Europe. And then he went to jail, like for I was just reading like a couple months or three months, because uh, they got caught. And then when he escaped like jail, like an illegal immigrant, yeah, you know, because he yeah, like he like, came from, um, right. yeah. Um, so then, after getting out of jail, he went. He wanted to become like when he was in Cameroon. He wanted to be like a prize fighter, like um the right. champion of the world. Yeah. And he was inspired. I was watching his interview with Mike Tyson, like. A while back and he was saying like that's who really inspired him you know um mm-hmm. mike because he's a big thing like mike yeah, Tyson yeah. at that oh, time yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so but he was like a he did so many like jobs he was like in the salt mines he was like a tuk tuk driver mm-hmm. and then like he saved up his money and then escaped to that place when he got to europe he was homeless and then he went to like the gym and he was like they were like oh you're a big guy because he's like physically menacing and he's like right. i want to be a a world champion mm-hmm, so they mm-hmm. brought him under his wing and then like um 20 years later i think it's been or 10 years 20 years since the the dream but 10 years since he like started to, like really he really started in like in europe uh no i think he left actually cameroon like when he left cameroon oh, to yeah, follow his right. dream right it's like 10 years or something like that oh okay okay and okay. then yeah he he was like he was on such a tear but he couldn't beat this guy because uh, he he's an amazing stand-up fighter. He was gonna go into boxing, but UFC like offered him first, so he might go into boxing right, afterwards, right? right? Uh, so his stand-up is like insanely good, but his wrestling's not there. Mm-hmm. So yesterday's fight, which was so crazy, like he lost the first fight against his champion because the guy just like held him down. It was really really close, but you know takedowns always win. So yeah. in this one, he tried to take him down, and it showed like he really worked on his wrestling. So mm-hmm. like. Like, I don't know who's going to beat him. Like, this guy's, like, such a force. Like, he's so menacing, and he's, he's got, like, one-hit knock. Like, he, the guy he won, the way he won yesterday was, like, a knockout again. <laughs> like, he's just got, like, such crazy knockout power. So the the thing that they're talking about is John Jones is moving up to heavyweight. So he might be the next fighter against um, Francis Ngannou. Oh, uh, okay. But just like we saw with Stylebender, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there is a difference in weight. So even though John Jones is like lighter and he, he's putting on weight, he might not be able to beat this guy. Right. Like we'll see. Is there like a weight range? Well, what yeah, is like the... two hundred five to two sixty plus. That's a huge. That's a huge, huge difference. difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no no wait wait no, sorry sorry sorry. Yeah yeah I think I think two hundred five is light heavyweight and then anything over two hundred five is heavyweight. Okay. So like you can get up to like two sixty. Like they're, right. they're, but it's, it's not, it's not good for you. Cause then you're like, you're no, you're, if you're in the body, he's not used to that. Yeah. And then you're like, your cardio shot, yeah, et cetera, yeah, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Right. Like I think John Jones is tall enough to fight him, but this guy is so jacked. So like John mm-hmm. Jones has got to get super jacked to like 
to like compete. And a lot of these things is you're doing it within a very short amount of time. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Weight, so you get exhausted. You're yeah, not totally. You're not right? used if to you've it. You've been living that weight for a long time. It's much more. You're used to it. Totally. Yeah. And and that's what they're saying. Like John, uh, Joe Rogan always keeps alluding to it, but him working in the salt mines is what made him so strong. Cause mm-hmm. that's just manual labor. Just like yeah. he's like carrying salt mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why he's like, his frame is just so jacked. Right. Right. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if John Jones can do it. It would be, but it's so funny. So like John Jones prior to this, he was like, Oh, I'm going to move up. I'm going to fight anyone. Cause the guy Stipe, isn't like physically imposing, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, this guy's physically imposing, <laughs> you know. So I think right. maybe John Jones thought Stipe would win again. And he's like, okay, I could take out Stipe. But like everyone's been avoiding Francis Ngannou. Okay, right, right, right. And after the win yesterday, he said, um, pay me, something like that. And then everyone's saying that he's scared um, because, because like, all right, so this guy wins. Like, you're going to do this whole tear. This guy wins. And then now you're saying, like, pay me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But then, <laughs> but then when he said that, everyone, like, called him, like, scared or whatever. And then he went to social media. He's like, how am I scared? Like, um, Conor McGregor gets paid a lot. I just want to be paid, too. But it's like, yeah, after seeing him smash the other dude, yeah, you'd want to be paid, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because, like, right. If, you, if you don't get paid well and you get smashed, it's like, oof. Yeah. Like, like you saw the size difference with Israel Adesanya and uh, Jan Blachowicz, remember? And, like, he just held him down mm-hmm. and, like, all that stuff. And that might happen with John Jones and um, Francis Ngannou <laughs> if, he, if he can't put on the weight. Because, like, this guy's just jacked. Right, right. But I'm just, most, I'm just like, more motivated by the come-up story, you know, of it. And then uh, he was asked, like, what are you going to do with the title? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't actually care about the title. It's more about the inspiration you can give to the next generation that like, see, I came from Cameron. I was, I was in a salt mine, like literally in the salt mines and look where I am now. Like if you follow your dreams, you can achieve great things. So but it was cool. He's like, instead of putting it in his gym in Cameroon, he's going to put in a public place so that people can see it. And he's like, whatever your championship belt is, like whether it's being like a doctor, an accountant, a lawyer, something like whatever you want to be, you can achieve it with hard work. So, yeah, I like that story. That's that's cool. It's an inspiring story. Yeah, that's pretty good. I would say. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, and what what's going on right now is like they're they're doing the three kings of Africa right now because mm-hmm. the current champions are Usman, who's from Nigeria, okay. um, Stylebender, yeah, Nigeria, and now um, Fred Sengani from Cameroon. So it's like the Africans taking over. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. And you're in say something. No, I mean like like the I think the inspiration thing is just because when you're in that kind of um like that world mm-hmm. um doing these hard labors, you do feel like well I, I I for me, like from my perspective, it looks like I don't like are they defeated by life? Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean of course some would find happiness through it, but not everyone, right? Yeah, so that's totally. like that's his story that he wanted to like this is not it's not easy work. No. Right. And yeah, yeah. I don't, you're not getting paid as much. Right. But barely. Any, like, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good to see stories like this even happen. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. That's why I wanted to watch yesterday. Yeah. Like I was super into yeah. it. Um, he was saying too, and I like this. He's like, he'll often go back to Cameron. Like, I think his mom still lives there. He's like trying to get her a visa to come to America mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, so, he'll often go back to Cameroon to remind himself where he came from. Yeah. So it's like, you don't want to be back here. Like you came so far, you know, it's like driving motivation, yeah. you know? And I, it makes me think about that too. Like, cause we said it right. Whenever we go back to like, you go to India or I go to the Philippines, mm-hmm. it's like, Oh wow, we're so privileged in the West. We yeah. don't think about it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it takes yeah. like constant reminders and reflections. Like what he was saying, you know, mm-hmm. like, cause somebody asked him like, Oh, now that you've made it out of that place, you're making all this money. Like, is it over? Like, do you, do you not have the drive anymore? Because you know, your life's set. And he's like, he's like, no. Cause I always remember where I came from. And it's right. like, no, this is, I'm so grateful to be here and like doing what I said I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Now, him, now him being the champion, it's more like, yeah, dream realized and then inspire 
the other people from Cameroon. Yeah, that's always what needs to be done. I, I, I mean, that's you, you, that is the more inspiring story. That is what people what attracts yeah. people to him. Totally right. Um, even even Mike Tyson on the podcast when he went on, Mike Tyson was like. Oh, I feel for you, brother. Like I, you're gonna do great things. Like mm-hmm. he was really into it because yeah. the story's amazing. You know, yeah, you were in yeah, salt yeah. mines, you know. And it's funny because like everything, like like if you say something, it sounds like a sage advice kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like like what are you saying about um, remember where you came from and all that? And the reporters are like, "Wow, you, you're spitting out some words of wisdom." I'm like, "No, because he lived it." So <laughs> yeah, like, that's what you're gonna say. Yeah, you know, yeah, so exactly. it's like to them, they're like, "Whoa, this guy's like a sage," but it's like, "No, no, I've seen." I've seen what it's like. Yeah, he's experienced it. You know, that's why he knows how to. Yeah, how yeah, yeah. And, and you're saying like you can you can often be blinded by like, uh, my house isn't big enough, my cars aren't big enough, and stuff. But then when you go to camera and you're like, oh, what am I talking about? You that know? reminds me of like, like, um, like Fifty Cent. Like, yeah, there oh, is true, right? true, true, true. Like, there is the ghetto. It's pretty bad. When he went to Africa, and then he went to Africa, and he's like, wait. Like comparatively, yeah, it's not as bad. No, I know, right? right? Yeah, that's... it's much, much more different. Yeah, when you actually see other parts of the world, what it's like. Yeah, totally. And I think that's like my my cousin once asked me, he's like, "What?" I think we brought some of them, or maybe we just talked about it, you and I. But like, um, my cousin once asked me, like, "Is it worth traveling?" And I'm like, "Well, no, like, no, because you can listen to the tales, but yes, because." you won't directly experience it Mm -hmm. remember and then you were saying um the the video the twitch things now that people will just bring the camera around the the city because of covid right yeah yeah, that was a youtube video i think by anyway so that uh, specific video i know what you're talking about but it was just like um bangkok the one you showed the one that was that was bangkok they have done a, a few other ones but it was just like having the camera walk around like uh all, like all these, um, uh, like a tourist destination area, yeah. and then um, you get oh you're seeing it, you, know, you see all the lights and the and the and and all the like the people moving around and having fun or whatnot. Mm. But that's only one perception of it, which is yeah. the visual perception. And that, and that blew my mind when you said that to me because I was like, you're right. We're we're watching these things and like people are watching these videos and these kids are watching these videos. Like oh I don't need to go there. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. But it's like. But having been to Bangkok and then watching that video, yeah. I'm like, yeah, they, they don't get the other senses, which is like it was hot or like people were looking at you weird and you're like, yeah, oh, like am a, I going to be exactly, robbed? Yeah. How, how like, humid was it? Yeah. Was it, were you, were you what comfortable? What did the food taste like? Yeah, what the food taste like? What did it smell like? Like all these other senses. Where did not you know you had to sleep that day? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's such a – this is why I think it's so funny – you know, living vicariously through other people. I think it's more important to watch things like, cause, cause I know I post like a lot on social media when I was traveling and put those travel videos and it's like, that's meant to inspire you to go do it yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not like live vicariously because, because like it's one sense. You're right. It's like, it's only the, the highlights, right? Like I'll put a two minute yeah. video, but it was a, you know, a two week vacation or, an, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah right. Right, so, right. And then, Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's well. Yeah, generally you're not putting up things that were bad about it. Right? Yeah, or but like, but so then how can you how can you grow from the experience if you've never had the experience? Yeah. You're only like learning about it. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what comes back to just knowledge over experience or what? D- what was direct it? Ex- oh, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you'll you'll have the knowledge but no experience, so you're not wise. Or alternately, you can have all the experience, but if you don't introspect or reflect on it or like study it then you're also not wise because you're just like you're guessing at that point right yeah yeah cool stuff anything else about um the the glow up of francis and ganu oh i I think that was a really good story i didn't know yeah totally yeah 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 yeah, totally and i think again that's all the only because i don't really watch heavyweight fights so oh yeah okay that's right right. yeah you know like you're like (laughs) oh okay i don't really know these people whatever but i i just knew his backstory so i was rooting for him right right, yeah yeah Yeah. i think i think these sort of things are really good like like for me i do like a like a really good backstory of a person Mm, yeah totally then, then i have a reason to be more inspired for that person or like yeah like cheer him on okay let's see like one wanting a victory for him I, I was thinking about this actually after he won i was like who else am i gonna root for like how many 
triumphant stories do you need to hear? Like Khabib's story is another triumphant one. He came from right. the mountains of Dagestan and mm-hmm. like 29 and oh, he won despite his dad's death. You know, that's a crazy story as well. That's why I like, and then his role model, like it's almost like all these people that come from these terrible places, not terrible because like they wouldn't say it's terrible or they might, I don't know. But like Khabib's from Dagestan, um, uh, Frantz Singan who's from Cameroon mm-hmm. and they're all really humble and they're very grounded. You know, right. all the champions that are from America, they're like, yeah, I won this on the best, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, but like these people are like, no, it's a privilege to be here. I'm so lucky to have this and like, blah, blah, you know? Right. Because they can see it. It's the, the, the chances of being hugely successful is very rare, right? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and, and they don't trash talk these people from um, these far off places because they know it's like, why am I going to act all spoiled on this? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Because they've seen it, they've experienced it. They, I mean, coming from the West, if you've only been here, lived here, you're not understanding how it is. Like, we know this, that they say that too. It's like, we're, anyone that's living in the West is part of the 1%. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right. And when you don't go and see other parts of the world, you're not understanding the struggles that people go through. Totally. Yeah, for sure. But then, but then again, so after watching his thing, I'm like, what else is next? You're just going to have another come up story and another come up story. Like how can you top Francis Ngannou and well, it's not like, like and, and, and it's not about like you know, beating another come up story. It's just like, what was their story? It, right, it, it, right. It, like, can we get behind the story? And yeah, all that? yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not like someone story beats another story. It's just their story. Right. I, I guess, but it's like, how many stories do I need? Personally, I'm saying like, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I just I, get bored of it now. I'm like, Oh, I'll watch you fight, bro. <laughs> Like Brian T. City's one, right? Like he was from, um, the, like Section Eight or something, like the ghettos of L.A. Okay. And like he was gang banging, and then like jujitsu saved him. But mm-hmm. I mean, like that's a good story, but it won't beat Cameroon salt right, mines or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Khabib from the mountains. Right. And he was born in like his dad literally bred him to be a fighter mm-hmm. from day one. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like yeah, yeah, how you yeah. beat that story. Right, they're they're like once in a lifetime individuals, mm-hmm. but I guess you could say that about like Muhammad Ali and like. Yeah, I mean know. these stories can become legends too, right? Like sometimes. No, no, totally. But with the internet now, yeah. yeah so yeah. now there's like, <laughs> now they're like when they're like, oh yeah, could be fought bears, and it's like, oh that's crazy. You think it's a legend, but there's footage of him fighting bears, yeah. so it's yep. like okay, now there's like fact yeah. check, you <laughs> yeah, know? Exactly. Like there's there's he um. Francis Ngannou posts pictures of himself from Cameroon and um, mm. uh, Paris. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying they're they're fake. It's just like sometimes legends stories happen out of that kind of. Yeah, stuff. true. And then we but, grow up bigger than it is and stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like these two people are like mm-hmm. gonna become like that with right, their stories. Right, right. I mean, unless Ngannou loses his next fight, then it's like, oh, that was cool. Now it's over. You know. But for him, it's been, it's a huge change. Right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, for you know sure, I mean? yeah. In life. He yeah. accomplished, and, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to boxing, because that's originally what he wanted to do. Right. Not in UFC. He had no idea what UFC is. Actually, in his story, he went, the gym he went to was a boxing gym, and they're like, oh, you're really big, though. Have you ever try like, wrestling or whatever? And he's like, what's that? Right. And then he, then they just got him into right. UFC. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's really that big UFC. I would say boxing is. Much no, no, more. it's not. It's not. He didn't know what UFC was. No, in I know. I, yeah. I think in, it's still overall, like even now. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, boxing, but it's slowly dying, like with the new generation, because like we're boxing all seeing. Is, yeah. Yeah, but because we're all seeing like there's other ways to fight too. Boxing's mm-hmm. cool, but it's one way. You know, like a boxer yeah. Yeah, versus yeah, yeah, yeah. an MMA fighter. MMA fighter is going to win every time. Right. Yeah. Like I mean, they're kicks. doing whole different things right but legends were made back then like mike tyson muhammad ali mm-hmm. yeah yeah cool anyway so um we checked out falcon and winter soldier number two episode two yeah what'd you think i thought it was really good yeah i'm really liking the series i love the blm aspect on this <laughs> I, I like i know we like like, like i think that they have a great opportunity to um, to, to really talk about that stuff. I think yeah, that was, might have been part yes. of the whole idea from the beginning, especially focusing on these two people. Oh, black and white. True, true, yeah. true, true. Yeah. Yeah, Bucky and um, mm-hmm. Falcon, yeah. 
even though one like all right so spoiler this is gonna be major spoilers but he he goes to the the um, was it maryland baltimore maryland? yeah baltimore maryland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so um he, they go there and then uh that the one kid's like hey you're black falcon <laughs> and then like they were laying on thick bro yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like he's like no just falcon he's like no my dad calls you black falcon he's like wait you're a kid right so are you black kid <laughs> and it was like oh that's true or like like it, you're saying it without saying it you know yeah yeah like yeah. oh we do do those things you mm-hmm. know we like hit people and they're not just a person they're a black person or they're a mm-hmm. white person they're mm-hmm. like also at the same time though i think descriptors are important but i get what they're trying to say yeah 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 and then what was cool was when they left and then him and bucky were having an argument and the police stopped them it's like is he bothering you sir and it was like oh <laughs> my god you guys are like pouring on the blm stuff like so hardcore right actually that, that's uh, what i like about the show when you, when you just said black falcon that reminded me of he called bucky white panther oh true i didn't even catch that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He like, says no, it's White Wolf. White Wolf, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. They're using their um, they're using their colors as a thing. Mm. Yeah, because he he got that name in Wakanda. Remember? Yeah, the White Wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like because he's white. <laughs> wow, that's so trippy. Actually, even um, Black Panther had that. Remember, they're like, uh, like be quiet, colonizer. Yeah. Remember oh, when we were, we were in the theater and they said <laughs> that? Oh man, everyone cheered and it was like, oh, that is cold, bro. He like really put that on display mm. you know i liked uh i'm i'm really liking it because it's bringing up important issues while not like pouring them down your throat yeah I, there's there's exactly like there there's it's a mix of everything right that i think we need those lessons in it but they can they're also like making a story yeah totally w- w- with these two characters right that that, that that can be um and i mean kids that are watching these things so yeah true so it's really gonna like affect them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah in in terms of the actual story itself what do, what do you think about the whole super soldier thing and like yeah like i'm Captain interested America? to know i mean really the blip has had a huge impact oh yeah true true true. i didn't even realize that yeah has had a blip. huge impact on the world uh so we don't know who these freedom fighters are they want to go back to the time before the blip. actually they have a good point because they're saying like a lot of things are focused more on the people that came back than the people that mm-hmm. were here the whole time right and i was like that's true but you'd also because they said it you and know, the system and, was because it's, you know when all the people left is like the system crashed yeah. right like it was a restart yeah but then everybody came back and now you're wanting to do the same system yeah. again we wanted to continue fixing that system right or like Yo, is this about Changing COVID, it. bro? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, is it even about COVID? Oh I wonder, like, goodness. how much has influenced in the story with what's happened with COVID, with the BLM stuff. That's like, true. How much it really has impacted the or the change in the story uh, of Falcon, yeah, totally. Falcon yeah, yeah. and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, speaking of COVID, actually, the Fauci was mm-hmm. that the main guy. So I saw his quote. He's like we were supposed to be fighting a virus. Turns out we were fighting ourselves. And I was like, Oh, that's a good line, bro. Cause like it really divided people in the country yeah. and like yeah. all that. But it's like, we should have been together, you know, but yeah, just like, just like the, um, the blip. Right. Yeah. It's like when you, when you come back, are you going to like, how, how is it going to fix itself? Mm hmm. Like even with uh, Falcon and his sister, remember she's like, "You were gone for five years, and yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to carry on stuff like that." Yeah, I really like the MCU. I mean, I love Justice League, but MCU's really doing well with these TV shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like the TV shows are really fleshing out the universe more than mm-hmm. the movies. You know? Yeah, there's only so much they can tell in a movie, right? But, yeah, yeah. Uh, in in show format because it's longer. That you can have more time. Totally, yeah. Um, really fleshing out the story. Like these are hour, almost an hour long each episode. True, so it's like, true. So it's almost like a movie every yeah, time. Exactly. What, what do you think of the new Captain America? What do you think he's a super soldier? Like what is that? It didn't seem like he's a super soldier, but I didn't understand how the the shield is. It just, how he's just no. Coming? He's just strong. Like remember, he got kicked by the other super soldier. I thought he was gonna die because I was like, dude, that's a super soldier kick, bro. Yeah, and he took I, it to I, the chest. I, I, 
Yeah, but they were they weren't super soldiers though, were they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Like these people are using the serum as well. Okay. I uh, don't know. They had to really explain this uh, the serum thing, and I feel like they gave it to that guy, mm -hmm. the new Captain America. Right, right. It was so funny. The big three. What was it? Uh, wizards. Um, aliens. Aliens. And what was the other one? They kept mentioning it was so funny. It was so I funny that we forgot. forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, was, I, I like that. They put like that humanity in there. Like the the comic relief humanity, you know? Right, yeah. It's always the big three. And yeah. Because yeah. these things can be pretty heavy. Like the the idea of it, you know, they're chasing down these super Well, well that's the thing. I, I think that's the difference here with, with Zack Snyder's style, Justice League. There was no comic relief. And, like, well, I mean, the Flash was, but it like, was like, like not no, really. in, in the sense that there's no necessarily a way. They're, they're not. It's a real world. There will be comic relief, but it's still that world is, is the real world. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this one is making fun of scenarios in that world. Yeah, it's like pointing so the it, finger it's pointing, at itself. Yeah. yeah. So that's the difference between what Marvel is doing, or True. at least the MCU is do, does, and then what... Um, what what Zack Snyder's Justice League or Man of Steel? True, true. That's true. what they did was different. Do you think they're going to introduce X Men in these TV shows? Uh, like I allude to uh, it, you know what I mean? Like kind of set the stage for X Men. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious license, to see. Right? Yeah, they so. have it. I don't know. But X Men is a big undertaking. That's the thing. Yeah. Like it's. I, like, I, I think they're still figuring out like how to add them in. I don't. They may I have had. Like, they might have had already. What the. the kind of the plan is but i don't know what what um stage are we in what do they call that um phases i don't, phases, I don't yeah. remember what phase we're in right now it, it might be after this next phase i don't i feel like mm -hmm. they're not going to bring in x-men anytime soon right but it was, it was interesting seeing at least in, in the wandavision like the um quicksilver quicksilver being recast as the one that was quicksilver in the x-men yeah yeah totally so um like they're gonna they are gonna do it just i don't know when they're really or, gonna or how they're gonna because because x-men is like the foundation of superheroes for mm -hmm. marvel mm -hmm. i mean there's spider-man like arguably it would be x-men and spider-man like when you think of marvel yeah yeah, yeah. who who else? like captain america's there but he's more tangential Iron Man was there, but he was like, who really paid we attention? Did, I didn't read his, his exactly. comics. That's I mean. read, I was more into the X-Men, totally. uh, Spider-Man, like those. Fantastic Four 2. Uh, I the, didn't really read that one either. Yeah, not not really, but like, I'd say more than Iron Man. Right. Right, like, because cause they had TV shows yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Like, Iron Man was there, but he wasn't like a central character. Mm -hmm. I know I had a few Hulk comics, but I wasn't following it as much. Yeah, I, I never liked Captain America. Like, I only just liked him because of now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well yeah they did a good writing for him uh yeah and in this right. new one yeah so i feel like if they're going to do x-men they're going to really make that one amazing because they have to you can't botch x-men and there's so right. many more characters like the amount of characters we see in the current avengers that's nothing compared to x-men there's so many mutants out there yeah right colossus nightcrawler um cyclops gene gray jubilee Mm -hmm. Wolverine um, and even those characters have their own characters okay. you know what I mean like yeah. uh, like Wolverine has his uh, Lady Deathstroke or Deathstrike um, and you remember he went to Japan he has Sabretooth with him yep. the Silver Samurai is with um, uh, Wolverine as well mm -hmm. so it's like each character each main character in X-Men has a series of characters right. associated with them. So it's like, how are you going to put that together? I wonder if it's, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be mixed into these stories yet. They're just going to be focusing on these or guys. Or into it. I think it's oh, coming no. in the next phase or like, that's what, that's what I mean. I feel like it's in the transition be, to the next phase. So like I, what I, I, I was one. just searching it cause I know there was, they're working on Eternals and I didn't know if Eternals were mutants or not, but okay. then it's saying that in Eternals, they might bring, bring X -Men. mutants into the MCU mutants. from okay. that. See, I could see that. Like, it's still too soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they gotta, all... I think they really are fleshing out the story, like how to, like, what's the next villain going to be? Yeah, what, exactly. What's the plan for the next 10 and, years? Right? It, and totally, I think it has to be after these 10 years because it's still too soon that we remember the Sony X-Men. Like, 
you when you think of Wolverine, who you think of Hugh Jackman. Yeah. yeah so course. you're not gonna bring when they Hugh do, Jackman when they in do, Marvel. Yeah, when they do have to get, you know get an ex uh, get um, a Wolverine cast. Like, exactly. It's gonna be See what I mean? Like <laughs> we're, it's still too it's still too close. Like we're still remembering all the old people. I still think yeah, I still think maybe it's a couple of years down the line. I don't think it's ten years down the line, but I think it's mm. it's more like a couple of years. Five? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So what what do you think about the Black Panther thing? Like the um number two without uh, yeah, that's there. I don't know what they're gonna how they're gonna write that. Yeah, I don't know. He said it was really, really hard. The director, mm-hmm. but I mean, of course, it's hard. Yeah, how do you how do you write Black Panther without Black Panther? <laughs> but they're like, we're not putting a CGI face on someone. Well, I don't think at this point. Yeah, no. Like it was. We'll see. I I, I don't know what they're gonna do with the story. If... It's too bad they got rid of Killmonger. I really like that guy. Wow, I want to see um. Black Panther now just for Killmonger. <laughs> Who'd you like better, Black Panther or Killmonger? I just like Killmonger's story. Like I understood what uh, yeah. he was going through. Like it makes sense. But I do like Black Panther because he's a cool leader. Well, yeah. Like, he's a cool uh, leader. But I think they were both were kind of understood each other at the end there. It, it was um it was like a Martin Luther King and um Malcolm X. Yeah, it was kind of <laughs> like that. You know, one wanted to revolt, one wanted to join, peace or war. Yeah. You know. But at the end, they both came towards peace. So. True. Yeah. Okay. You mean the real characters, yeah. not yeah, the yeah. real. But even even like th- there was the fight, but it was like it, he they, under- they understood yeah. each other. Yeah, because they were going after the same cause. They both wanted Wakanda to be great, just yeah. different means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But we're we're getting off topic on the Falcon <laughs> and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's your favorite character, Falcon or Winter Soldier? I, I think there's a, uh, they both have, you know, interesting depths, but I, I kind of like Winter Soldier. Me too. Cause Me too. His is much more, uh, like, really... Brooding. Yeah. 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 And no, With the loss what? of Steve. Captain America or Steve Rogers yeah, to him. Oh, remember that scene where he's like, if if he was wrong about you, he's, he's wrong, wrong about, about me. me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, that, this is, that's why he's mad at him. Yeah. Because he's like, it's not that he gave it up, it's just like his identity was wrapped up in the belief of Steve Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if Steve Rogers is wrong, that means that he might be wrong about right. Bucky as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. about Bucky being a good guy. Yeah. That was pretty deep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. why I think, that's why I liked him more, because he's got more of a yeah, struggle yeah, totally. going on here. Yeah, and the Falcon's just a cool guy. But you know what I can't get over, and that's why, oh, did you know the Falcon was in 8 Mile? Uh, the rap battle. Oh, was that him? Yeah. <laughs> I was watching his interview in the uh, Hot Ones. I was like, okay, oh, that's okay. where you're from. All right, cool. I didn't realize that. Um, but he he was in that movie, I think it's like The Night Before, the Christmas movie. The Night Before? With um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Seth Rogen. Was it Seth Rogen? I don't remember this. I think it's Seth Rogen. Okay. Yeah, you Google it. Um, after watching that, I just can't take him seriously. Falcon? Yeah, because he's too, oh. he's too comical. Because after watching that, I was like, oh, this is your real personality. Like, you're not actually like this badass superhero. You're like a real comedian at heart. Well, yeah, he does use it a lot in, in, the, in, the, in the show. In the show, But too. like, I just remember his character in that. And I'm just like, oh, you ruined it, man. Because like, I know that you're really a funny guy. Because right. like, you can't, you can't fake being funny. That's like... um. Like uh, who's who's the guy that played Thanos? Um, I don't remember. Josh Brolin. Yep. So Josh Brolin, imagine him playing comedic role. <laughs> Couldn't do it, right? He's like that brooding badass character. So that's just like Falcon for me. It's like when you try and be badass, I'm like, ugh. Mm-hmm. But you're really funny at heart. Well, when he was first casted, I think he was more added as like the like for comedy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Parts, yeah. Right? But now that he has a leading role, it's hard for no. me to, yeah. <laughs> you know, what like Bucky I can take seriously, but maybe that's the point, right? Like Bucky's the serious one. And right. then, yeah. 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 Uh, it's still, it's pretty good. I, I do want to know well, who those, those super, people soldier. super soldiers, but it seems like even on the super soldier side, they have like some agenda going on. Like even there's infighting. M- remember she got that text, like, you yeah, stole yeah, it, yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah, kill yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, again, I uh I'm kind of sad that this one isn't released all at once. 
because I would binge it. Like it's so good, I would binge it. Yeah, but that's the whole point. See, this is this is what I understood. Why it's not just them, right? It's all the newer ones that are doing it like this. Like what? Releasing it Disney weekly. or even Disney? Yeah, Disney, Netflix? Apple TV, not Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. It, is it depends on if they've got the contract or not. But like generally, Netflix, if it's only their their own product, they will release all of it, right? So we got used to Netflix whole the binge aspect of it. Yeah. But what? Uh, why uh, Disney, Apple TV, and like and HBO still do this weekly thing is because people keep talking about it weekly, right? So like it's so you're it's getting longer. more marketing, yeah, uh, power that's happening. If you release it all at once, you you might you'll be in in the news for just about a week. Totally, and you have like peripheral products because yeah. you can make toys, and then like mm-hmm. they'll always keep talking about the toy, you know? Right. So yeah, when you release it weekly, every like we're talking about it. We talked about it last week. We talked about it again this week. We're going to talk about it next week. It's, so, it's, it's like a foundational thing exactly. now. So we can actually go episode by episode, right? So it, it just makes it much more, um, like maybe they caught, they'd miss the first episode. They're going to catch, you know what I mean? Like they hear yeah, about the yeah, second totally. one and, oh, okay, well, I'll watch it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So it, it's, I understand from their perspective why they're doing this. Yeah, true. W- would you ever do a Marvel um super watch or something like that like my sister did it where she watched <laughs> every single one in order but like imagine adding tv shows to that now <laughs> all you, your your life is done like what are you gonna yeah, do yeah 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 that, that's i mean i don't know how many hours they have right now with everything yeah that's a lot so yeah <laughs> but th- i love that they partnered like now that you look back at it in retrospect i do love that they partnered with disney because Disney is a major platform, so mm-hmm. you know Marvel's not going anywhere. Yeah, and like, which is great because I was on the Mar- the Disney website and I was seeing like all of the animated series that I watched as a kid mm-hmm. on there, and I was like, oh, great, I can go back and watch it. Yeah. Not that I did, but it's nice to know it's there. Yeah. Well, that is also with them buying Fox, right? They were that's how they Who can buy Fox. Disney. Disney? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they oh, have. That's why they have the contracts. Yeah. That's why oh. they have like the, the X-Men and the animated X-Men that we used to watch in the nineties. That's, oh, that was okay. Fox, right? So that was. What about Sony? Do they buy Sony's? No. Like, no. How'd they get contracts back? How'd they get Marvel? How'd they get um, X-Men? X-Men wasn't, uh, X-Men was not Sony actually. It was Fox. All right. How'd they get Spider-Man? There is a deal between the two. Remember oh. they, remember they, they, they stopped. Remember there was a, there was a clash between Sony and Disney. Then they're like, okay, we're not doing any more Spider-Man. And they came back and then they right, agreed right, on right, another right. deal again. So, yeah, yeah, so Disney's not, or Sony's not letting it up because they know that Spider-Man's got the money that. Cause Tom Holland, yeah. he posted that thing about like not being Spider-Man anymore. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Or actually he's more, he's contracted with Sony. He's not contracted with Disney. I don't think. Really? Yeah, yeah I believe so. Wow. So it's like if there's no Spider Man, there's no Spider Man with Disney. It'll be with, with Sony. Sort of like Venom. So, yeah. Venom so, yeah, exactly. Was uh, Tom Tom Hardy? Yeah. So so Venom is only a Sony product. It's oh, not part of Disney. Okay. What was that? More Morbius. Mm-hmm. That's also a Sony. That's and a it, Sony thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. um, Jared Leto plays Morbius. Right. Yeah. Morbius is from. These are all from the Spider Man universe, right? These guys, uh, yeah, it's, he's Blade. He he is he is in the Spider Man universe because that is where they talked about him. Okay. So like in the so I don't know what Sony what parts of Spider Man they own or or like what parts of okay Marvel characters they own in in the nineties Spider Man TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's just called Amazing Spider Man. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that one was like so mature too. Like going back, I'm like, wow, they had some crazy themes. <laughs> yeah. Like the death of Mary Jane was like, mm-hmm. well, that's so pivotal for, and then Peter Parker not, never got over it. He was like psychologically scarred mm-hmm, for the rest mm-hmm. of his life. But so anyways, so in that show, they brought Blade and Blade had to fight Morbius. So like, okay. are these characters... They're bringing Blade back, right? They're making yeah, they are. Blade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who's the guy from uh, Green Book? Right. He's okay. playing um, Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that guy. He was also in Hidden Figures. Yes. And he was jacked. So it's like, okay. I see what you're doing. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you're preparing your body for right, the role. Right. I think it's rated R. Is it rated R? Better be. I think it is. Blade. But 
it'll be a tough sell for me because I always think of Blade as Wesley Snipes. Yeah, I know. I was, I was only that thinking of Wesley Snipes. Amazing. Snipe name. Yeah. Oh, God. He was like, that Blade, like, you, oh, man, if you listen to this and you haven't seen Blade with Wesley Snipes, that is the crazy, is that on uh, Disney? Because a Marvel movie. I don't know. I didn't look up that one. In Blade 1 and 2. I know people didn't like 3. That's where Ryan Reynolds was there. <laughs> and apparently uh, Wesley Snipes hated 3. Like he hated oh, yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Because mm. <laughs> he's like, why is this guy like jokey? Blade is a serious role. Because like in the first ones, right? He played um, such a serious yeah, right. guy. Yeah, right. I think we even watched that for my birth, or we were going to watch it for my birthday. Right? Something. I don't remember. Yeah. Did, or maybe we did, because I remember it was rated R, so my parents had to come with us. <laughs> to, do you remember that? Like, I remember us watching it. I don't remember your parents. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was my birthday. <laughs> like They had to like let us in, but we were young. We were like 12 or something like that. <laughs> that was a crazy movie. So much gore. That was a good movie. Yeah. So yeah. like I, I don't know about this guy. Like You'll have to really work hard to fill the shoes of that blade. I think he knows that, yeah. Because, like, the thing is, Wesley Snipes is an actual martial artist, so when he was doing right. those moves, it was like, oh, you know how to fight. Mm-hmm. Or, like, like movie fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know about this guy. I've never seen him train. Like, you need you need a good combat special. Like, you, it would be, it'll be obvious if this blade doesn't know how to fight hand-to-hand, and it'll be ugly. Right. We'll see how it's going to be done. I mean, unless you have a really good stunt double. So That's true, too. That's true, too. Yeah. Anything else about uh, Falcon Winter Soldier or Marvel, I guess? Cause... In general, yeah. I mean, I like I like the show, where it's going. I yeah, me too. I do want to see more. I love that they're uncovering things in society that are broken. Mm-hmm. And that that's cool to me. I think I feel like... When they're like, oh, hindsight's twenty twenty, and then like the whole twenty twenty movement of like being woke, mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. like they're on they're on the right path mm-hmm. for that, you know. They they're like perfectly aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, Dark Tower, Dark Towers, <laughs> read that book, Deutsche Bank, crazy, crazy the banking system that we don't even like. They always say, like, people who make lots of money got it nef- through nefarious means. Mm-hmm. And then one of the things that blew my mind in the book was um, that they... So they were they were a bank in Germany, and then the Nazis said, like, you're going to, like, run all of our finances to help finance the war. And they were in charge of, like, organizations and, like, melting down of gold stolen from the Jews and like that's how they made their money to become super rich and then you know they they finance that war right and like that's their origin story you know and you brought up this interesting point about like how do we know that the Nazis aren't still running that bank and I'm like (laughs) that's true though like you don't know like like how we brought not we but America brought scientists you know Operation Paperclip and they worked on the Mm -hmm. space program Mm -hmm. yeah makes you wonder like what what's really going on behind the scenes you know right i, I guess there's it's not necessarily all banks is it it's there uh, are a this, few banks well, i mean that are... this this one got caught for money laundering multiple times okay. and still right yeah kpmg another one right so like yeah I was, I was watching a little bit of it in the beginning of that of that interview of the one that wrote the book and that the bank could have been fully liquidated and gone at the end of the world war. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what well, America was going to do. Yeah. But it was Britain that wanted reparations from oh, really? the war. Oh, I didn't know that. So that Britain, uh, cause the, I guess the bank luckily was on Britain's side of Berlin because okay. it broke in Berlin into multiple parts. Right. Okay. That, cool. So they can, they allowed, um, Deutsche Bank to exist. Oh, to continue to exist. Interesting. So does it still exist now because of that, or else it would have been liquidated and gone. So so what's really fascinating about Deutsche Bank too is because it's in Europe and Germany and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's like mm, like questionable past. It's been caught multiple times for money laundering for Russian money. Right. So, <laughs> so what I found interesting is 
Um, See, that's the thing. That's the thing with 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 banks necessarily. There's no loyalty to a country, even though it says this, right, yeah, its yeah, name right, is. Right. It literally the loyalty means, is to money. Yeah, there. The name literally means Deutsche Bank. Literally means German bank. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So it's not. Huh. <laughs> so it's like you're not really acting necessarily in favor of Germany. You're acting right, in favor right. of money. It's like HSBC, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Bank of China. Right. Like, but they're but they don't care where they get the money from. It's just a allegiance company, uh, country name bank mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh. So it is interesting because during the election, you know, they kept bringing up like, "We want to see your taxes. We want to see your taxes." But reading the book, it turns out it's not actually about proving that Trump had paid zero taxes but if you can look into his taxes you can look into all his financial dealings and the financial dealings of his partners mm-hmm. and then in doing that they can uncover like a deeper web of lies <laughs> or like conspiracies right, that are going on right, you know because right. like so so they're saying you know russia is controlling trump and i don't think that russia actually um is telling him what to do they might be but that's like we can't really it's not for sure but what we do know is that russia helped fund a bunch of trump's projects like his golf courses All right and also uh deutsche bank who lent trump half a billion dollars billion with a b mm-hmm. they're also money laundering for russia so if if deutsche bank is getting a bunch of its money from russia and then it and then Trump is also on the hook for Deutsche Bank because like to give right, him the right. half a billion dollars, he had to sign off his personal assets. Mm-hmm. Meaning if he can't pay back half a billion dollars in 10 years, they own everything. Right. Which means we, we basically own you. Mm-hmm. We call all the shots, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's more like indirect like collusion with Russia that like we can't really know, but obviously there's a, there's something going on there. Like yeah. there's right. influence. If you owe somebody so much money, Right, I mean, yeah, like there's already questionable aspects about Deutsche Bank that yeah, it's like, why you were working with a you know what I mean a questionable entity right there. It's totally. So then, so then, Trump being on the hook for Deutsche Bank, how do you know there's no questionable things as well? Mm-hmm. So, but apparently, like also in the book, so some executives, like two executives, he makes a suggestible case. We we won't we can't know for sure, but that they were suicided. So, like, they were killed but made it look like a suicide by the bank. Right, right. This was in the book. Yeah, it's in the book. Yeah. He didn't specifically say, well, actually. These are the, allegations. Right? Yes. Without. Yeah. The son of one of the executives, his dad committed suicide. And he's like, my dad would never commit suicide. Mm-hmm. And then when he opened his dad's laptop, everything was unlocked. So, he's like, oh, did he know that something was going to happen? Like he, so kept, he, he kept a file of everything about the bank? No, like, no it's like, you know, like his emails were unlocked. Um, his, unlocked? Like, every, his like computers unlocked. His emails were unlocked. Oh, I um, see. Okay. So like you could just read everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this guy gave it to this author mm-hmm. and like that's mm-hmm. how he's getting some of his information for the book. But then another person, another exec got suicided. Like the daughter was like, oh, it's not Deutsche Bank's fault or whatever. But he's like, kind of looks like it. He said something bad two weeks ago. No, no, he was in contact with his author. Two weeks later, he died. Well, he got he killed himself. Right. So again, it's like speculation. Yeah. But they they have a questionable past, so it's like, what's going on here? You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, so so back to it. Sorry, I I meant to say this. So Trump called them out in his like called who out Deutsche Bank. He's like these banks are getting away with murder. <laughs> said that so i was like hmm but it was it a figure of speech or was it literal right and did he yeah and did he like he could mean other whole other bank he like he says it in a way where yeah, it's not so, so he's so direct but it's like why are you saying that that's like so that's weird. why when you read in the book you're like hmm, this is kind of questionable i see where you're going with this but mm-hmm. but he never says it explicitly in the book it's like you draw your own conclusions <laughs> but you know there's a lot of a lot of um fodder for the fire there yeah um i got yeah i don't know much about deutsche bank is there other banks that have gone through anything like this did they mention any other so. no, no no this is just specifically, deutsche specifically. Bank. i'm reading another book uh it's called i haven't i haven't really cracked into it enough to talk about it um it's why nations fail 
Mm-hmm. But the whole premise behind the book is like why the third world stays the third world and the first world stays the first world. Like what dealings are going on to keep everything mm-hmm. going in this mm-hmm. manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about that, it's like because I was watching a press conference, uh, Biden's first one after so long. Okay. Um, they were like talking about because of China's dealings, right? Yeah. And uh, the issue with um, uh, China not following the rules. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And totally. um, because China wants to get ahead and for sure to be the number one spot, right? So, um, but it was the way that they were saying it was like, um, well, they have to play by the same rules, right? But who's setting these rules up, right? Totally. In the first yeah, place. Yeah. But then it's also like by saying like, oh, all um, democratic nations should get together, or at least in, in within the Asia part, along with the U.S., working together against China. China. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> but, y- you know, that's funny because that, that example answers the question because, like, remember Walt was like, how do you know there's not one thing ruling the world? And I was like, well, they would agree. If there was one thing ruling the world we'd have peace because that one thing would just answer everything. It'd right, be like, right, don't right. do this, do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right. but because you know, they're, they're trying to compete for the top spot exactly. that shows you that there's no one entity ruling the world. Yeah. No, but maybe there should be or else because then there would be peace. Well, that's, that's the right? whole idea. That was the whole idea of Genghis Khan. You trying to, to unite to, the world. You're right. Yeah. The you're world right. I didn't to, think about that. Yeah. But everyone has, you know, uh, I guess Alexander tried to do that or like mm, yeah. uh, there are other uh, conquerors that try to think like that. that America's trying to do that technically. Well, they kind of do what we thought. Through its commerce and all yeah, that. Through yeah, through commerce. Like, but um, and but culture. things go wrong all the time, though. It doesn't like it's still even then it's still difficult to do. Yeah, for sure. Right. For like sure. they like what happened. Like we saw with Argo, like they had connections with Iran and all of a sudden. Yeah, totally. It, it fell apart. Right. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so, so that shows you that there's no cabal of mm-hmm. these people. Although, um, then Wob did say that it's not really one person, but a conglomerate. And I was like, that makes sense because that's what Davos is. Like every yeah. year, they connect. Like the world leaders meet up in Davos, and like they have to pay seven hundred thousand dollars per year as like a membership fee. Yeah, yeah. And they talk about like the economics of the world, where we're going to take the economics, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. That seems a little nefarious. It seems nefarious, but again, they don't know. They can't predict what the future is. They can say some things, but like yeah. the, these new guys in, the, new, like, in like the tech world, these things change it all the time. Like, like, yeah, right, saying right, like, totally. like they didn't, who thought about Amazon? And then like they become so big. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Right? These yeah. are people that were um, like, or Elon Musk. These are just engineers that just yeah. are coders that became um like billionaires but they're doing st- different things <laughs> they, they get a seat at the table yeah in davos and, yeah exactly and how much difficult it was even for like for tesla to become hugely successful when you're facing a huge oil company right it's like yeah like, totally, that's yeah, a yeah. huge battle right there so, so yeah true true because oil runs the world and tesla's trying to change that so it's like mm-hmm. okay that shows you that again no one entity rules the world or else they'd be like all right we're all switching to electric now Right, or, but yeah. because there's competition, I think what we need to realize, and it's been said before, um, there is no uh, Illuminati. We are the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. So it's like the the system that's ruling the world is us. Like we are, we're in a symbiotic system of changing the world and also being ruled by the world. The people. The people. Yeah. Yeah. Because like collectively, we're spending our money on specific things. Exactly. And that's what changes the ruling of the world. Yeah. Like, how did Amazon get rich? How did Elon Musk get rich? We bought their products. Mm -hmm. Like, we could have just not bought their products, and they would have been not rich. Exactly. So it's like we are making these one percenters just as much as the one percenters are trying to control us, Mm -hmm. which is their marketing, right? Like, you need this product. And then we're like, yeah, we buy into it. We'll buy right, it. Right, yeah. Oh, well, I want that uh, one day delivery. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's that's the thing. We, it's we are the cons- like the consumers. We are the one buying into this. Yeah, thing. yeah. We are, we are the system that we're complaining about. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're like right. Why right. are these Amazon companies? Did you buy from Amazon? I did. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. that's why they're, mm-hmm. you know, just boycott Amazon if you don't want Jeff Bezos to be the richest person in the world. You know, get yeah. rid of it. Right. Yeah. Actually, speaking but. of Jeff Bezos, I posted this. So my sister sent me this video and I was like blown away by it. I showed it to Tara and we were both like, oh, that's crazy. 
but then somebody corrected me in the comments and I was like, Oh, so I had to delete it. I was like, yeah, I know when I'm wrong. So, what was it? so they said Jeff Bezos has a hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know that video. Did, do you saw it? Yeah. 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 I've seen it. I was like, I wanted to tell you about it. Oh, I did, I, I, it's I, wrong. The math yeah. is wrong. Of course the math is wrong. I didn't even think about it. I, I, I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know. I'm so <laughs> dumb. Well, I mean, you, <laughs> I'm a marketer, not a mathematician. So it's all about art for me. How many times are I wrong with math? Right? But no, when so I first like, saw that, I'm like, um, how does that make any sense? Seven, like, anyways, yeah. but like, then, then I, I went through the comments and it's yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so bad. And then what was really bad is like, it had like 600 views. So I was like, ooh, let me pull this down right away. Because like, I'm just spreading bad information at that point. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted is, to tell you that, but I Yeah, it's I me forgot. doing my due diligence of uh, <laughs> admitting that sometimes I'm wrong. And uh, I had to pull that video down because it was, it was wrong. That's why I went to the comments to see what the comments were saying on yeah, this. The, like, the one guy who who made me realize it is he's like, he's like one hundred times one billion equals one hundred billion. You're welcome. And I was like, <laughs> what? So then I listened to the video again. And I'm like, because so, basically yeah, yeah, the yeah, video yeah, was yeah. saying that he has one hundred eighty seven billion dollars. That means he can give every person in the world a billion dollars because there's only seven, seven million, billion. seven like million, seven, seven billion people in the seven world. Million, yeah. And he'd still have yeah, yeah, X yeah. amount left over, but. A billion per seven billion is seven billion billions, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Wow, that was that was really bad." That's <laughs> why I need to work on my mathematics. <laughs> yeah, don't don't trust me for any math related things. <laughs> but he yeah. put it up. The guy, like, I don't know, or or he probably put it up as a meme. I don't know. Like, can did he really think? Maybe he thought, like, let me show how dumb people are, and I was like, <laughs> "Yep, fell right in that trap." <laughs> but that's the thing, you know. Like, everybody wants. Like the people to be like, like the, everybody wants the people that they're listening to, to be perfect. That's what like Joe Rogan, he'll admit like, I'm sometimes I'm wrong, mm-hmm. you know, but I think that's what a good human being or like an evolving human being should yeah. be able to do. Yeah. Whereas people who are staunch in their beliefs. Like if I had seen that and I was like, no, you're all still wrong. Well, like if I hold on to that, it's like, it is what it is, bro. You know, it was wrong. Right. Yeah, uh, there's there's something to it where a lot of people. That, uh, actually, that's why I posted the next video <laughs> after taking that down of like this guy in the UFC getting head kicked and then like he was all wobbly and I was like, what it feels like to constantly review, check or like your current yeah, yeah, pa- paradigms because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like that's that's what it felt like when right. he when he really said that and I, I read it I was like ooh I like <laughs> got a little wobbled there but it's whatever just keep moving forward but you're gonna say. Uh, I lost the train of thought. I don't know. Oh, okay. People rule the world. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It really it it does come down to people like all, any revolution. Like it's the people that are taking out. You know what I mean? The top yeah, people. Totally. So it's it's by voting. Um, yeah, that that's the thing. It's really yeah. the thing. You Especially also vote with your dollars. You vote with your ballot also and that, with yeah. your dollars. Yeah. yeah. But we forget that all the time. I mean, I hear that all the time, like, um, especially ones who are like super, um, capitalist types of people where oh, yeah, okay. it'll be, uh, a company will only survive based on like, if we are putting money into it exactly, or not. Yeah. Exactly. I agree with that. I agree with that. But there should be, but there are like that part. I do. I totally agree with. Yeah. But like, uh, I the, agree with regulations too, but, but that, the, that's the thing that, you know, when people talk about bailouts, I think the reason why they get bailed out is because there'd be a crazy domino effect. Mm -hmm. So like, um, Mm -hmm. if, if people, if people, okay. Remember that scene in, oh, it's really hard to explain this without like you just watching the video, but it's in the big short. So Mm -hmm. if people, if we make a a bet, right. We're like, I'm going to bet that this is going to work. You're going to bet that it's not going to work. And then somebody makes a side bet off of our bet. Mm-hmm. And then somebody makes a side bet off of their bet. And then you keep going. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you have all these millions of side bets going on. Right. And that's how the financial system works. Right. Mm-hmm. So like you, you leverage your, your assets and your liabilities and like against one another to fuel the market. So if one goes down, you're going to have a domino effect of broken bets. So like if, if I fail, then all the people that did a side bet supporting me failed. Yeah. 
And I think that's why they need to do bailouts. Mm-hmm. Like, even though people are like, mm-hmm. why the, why the big banks get bailouts is like, there's probably some unintended consequence if they didn't get bought, bailed out. Like yeah. We, we, I, might, we might crumble the entire system yeah. literally if they don't get bailed out. Yeah, it would have. I, I, I think it would have. Um, like, okay, actually, especially here's, here's, for America. Here, totally. Here's, here's a salient example. So the housing crisis, right? Mm-hmm. 2008. Why did the banks get bailed out? Well, the banks also provide you with your loan. Yeah. How? Where did the bank get the money to give you the loan? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it was using other people's money and other businesses' money. Yeah. So like, if that bank fell, not only would your loan default, every other loan would default. Default means like, it gets like canceled out. Yeah, yeah. Like you get brought to zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's what the domino effect would be. It'd be like failing business after failing business after failing business if these banks failed. Yeah. So, well, the one, yeah, see, but the thing is like, there, then you would have to, like, sure, the failure happened. And when you fix it, you've got to change or add regulations so totally, it doesn't yeah. happen again. Yeah. Right. Because totally, they were yeah. giving out homes for like, Without being checked and stuff. Yeah. Without, or like having down, zero down payment. Or I don't know, like some things like that. When you don't know if they're actually going to be able to pay, you know, three months down the line or something like that. But what that what that is, is you just get quick money then. So if... No, that's what that was, yeah. Because then you, you can like, you know, like mortgages, right? You can take out more money against your mortgage, mm-hmm. right? So it's sort of like that. It's like, if we just give you the mortgage, right. then you can start taking out more money. No, 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 I know. And then I know. we can build the system it, a lot faster. Exactly. And this is where the government has to come in to add regulations. And be so like, hey, we can't. These don't happen. But then here's here's the flip side to that coin. Then what if China builds faster than us? I know. <laughs> so I think, I don't know. Yeah, I say us like North America. So, but it's really US who's doing this. So US has to issue out these like, bad loans or like faulty ish loans, unstable loans in order to keep progress against China. Yeah. But I think it'll, again, th- that's, um, it would, it would crash their system too. Like if people are not China? buying, yeah. Within maybe if, if they keep growing without no, anyone buying it too. Right? No, no, because I think China, because they have the like a ton world. of, they have a ton of ghost, town cities in china yeah no right right right. but everything's made in china right so yeah yeah, yeah. it's not just it's not just u.s who relies on china like europe relies on china no 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 no. yeah no no no. so like even if america went down i think i think it'd be really bad but at the same time i think china would survive i think asia would survive yeah well yeah um well now i mean china is more prepared in the sense that they know, I think, eventually they won't be necessarily the manufacturing hub. Of the um, world? China? Eventually. Really? Yeah, where, that, where that's why they're... No, that's why that's why they have their own types of own businesses. Like, Huawei is their own company. Like, but, but like where, a China-made where, company. Where else would they build? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, like, you know, their own products. So, like, Huawei is a China product. No, no, no. Right, right, right. But uh, weren't you just saying that... Where, where would they go? No, no. They would yeah. be looking at other cheaper countries to, to manufacture in. But where? Like, like what? What's cheaper than China? India is the only. Well, other yeah, India. Could... That's where like a lot of the. I mean, not a lot of the. They're they're starting with the iPhones over there. Um, then there's Brazil. Uh, but Brazil's a small Mexico. country. No, no, I know. But but uh, what I'm saying is, it's not going to happen in the next ten years. This is, but China knows eventually because as their money grows, that means their, um, people don't necessarily want to uh, manufacture there because it's too expensive. Right, right, right. So that's what I mean that. What they are doing now is making their own products, right? So like Huawei is pretty big, right? No, no, right, yeah, like or like other know, to enter on the stage, but exactly Huawei is not going to like Chinese products aren't going to, um, they're not going to like be enough to, like all right, how many phones can you sell? Seven billion, let's say. It's your max. No, cap. I know, I know. Again, it's um, but I'm not with, just saying it's for phones, but there, but, there are like other plastics, companies that they're textiles, doing. yeah, furniture, mm-hmm. like that. That's what they focus on mm-hmm. you know and i just i don't see anyone beating them like maybe over no, no i'm saying like i think i think eventually the manufacturing world will change where they're building it or they'll have it not necessarily only in china they'll have it in multiple areas just because yeah true yeah um, but i think that's I part think of that's... the whole transition with i think that's what kind of what happened with covid at the beginning because of the 
because uh, oh yeah because they realized like yeah, 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 a lot because everybody yeah. was building logistics in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but i don't know i i feel like china no, like my sister was saying this isn't china called the sleeping giant and i think it is i think that's the nickname of china yeah yeah, yeah. but it's probably because they're just waiting they know that they're really <laughs> ruling the world like if you like we're like oh america's ruling the world whatever whatever but it's like but the one who owns the debt is the one who's owning the yeah, yeah. debtor yeah. right so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. how yeah. much money does china owe compared to usa mm -hmm. so like we we might like the world stage just might be america but the real ruler of the world is china yeah i think so yeah and that's something that i don't think anybody wants to especially these western nations kind of want to or any democratic yeah, nations just, want there... to say that it's an authoritarian country that's right yeah has the power of because because it's the uh it's in their like the chinese would probably say this it's in your arrogance we're ruling you through your own arrogance it was like in that factory um yeah, yeah. documentary right mm -hmm. like you have to uh you have to pet the donkey with the grain because if you go against the grain you'll get kicked or something like yeah, that yeah he was talking about like American hubris, mm -hmm. you know, he's like, you have to play to their egos yeah, yeah. or else they'll get mad at you. Mm -hmm. Only a smart, only the one who really knows that they're ruling things is willing to do that. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, they're, they're too dumb. Just, <laughs> just do it their way. We know who's in power here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So final, final thing. Cause I, I was just listening to the thing. Um, psychedelics are making a crazy resurgence in health and wellness. I think you saw the article too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So what I think is really weird about the whole quote unquote drug industry is that a lot of things that we use as everyday pharmaceuticals are actually drugs. Like their base form is <laughs> narcotics mm -hmm. or like illegal drugs, schedule A. Right. Okay. So, so, um, uh, like morphine is basically a derivative of heroin or like they're similar. I, I see what you mean. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we call it morphine. Mm -hmm. We don't call it heroin mm -hmm. or, you know, but they're like, they're the compounds are similar or like, um, lidocaine. Like, you know, when you go to the dentist and they put the numbing cream on your gums before they give you an injection, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cocaine. That's the, the derivative form of coke. Like, um, they derive that from yeah, cocaine. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, and like, um, the one that really blew my mind, I'm still not finished the Hamilton Morris podcast, but that's that's the podcast where I'm getting the information from. And also like other reading that I did on like opium and like hashish. Um the 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 emodium, you know, like when you have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So emodium is oh, what was it? Was it heroin? I think it's uh, it's it's like some sort of op I think it's heroin. So like, yeah, it's heroin. Yes. So they were able to. Um, so when you do narcotics like that, like strong narcotics, you actually get constipated. So what the person did was they just singled out the molecule that goes to your brain. So when you yeah. take Imodium, your body your body's going through the physical sensation of opiates but you're not getting high. Right. And that's why you get constipated because mm -hmm. when you do opiates, you get constipated. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah of course. We yeah. call it emodium. Like we're like oh, over the yeah, counter. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, what? Yeah. I mean, they're taking a, yeah, as you said, a particular molecule or, or like a derivative of it, like, but you're not getting the high aspect, but you can mind blow dude. Yeah. But, but I mean like there are issues. Some people do have, um, With not emodium. necessarily modium, but like I'm saying, um, morphine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. Right? T3s, that, that T3s, right? Yeah, yeah, Tylenol yeah. T3s. Yeah. So that there is some um could be bad effects to it too, right? Um, or or um uh what's that? You know like syrup that the rappers drink? That's like <laughs> cough syrup and Sprite. <laughs> okay. Right? That but that is um that's a narcotic as well. Mm -hmm. Like but they found that the narcotic is a cough suppressant. Mm -hmm. So that's why they put it in the cough syrup. And then people realize that and they're just like, okay, we'll just drink the cough syrup. Right, right, right. Cuz we'll get high. And I think he said, because I, I suffer from like allergies, right? So I took uh, antihistamine and he was saying that um, antihistamines are also a really powerful narcotic, but we just take them on the daily. And when I took it, I was like, 
you're you get like a little sleepy and a little high because it's suppressing your immune system so that your body so when you have you like get allergies a drowsy, yeah yeah when you have yeah. allergies your body's attacking it yeah, 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 so it yeah. nullifies your body yeah. so that you don't you're not on hyper alert yeah so yeah, that's like, what with me well when i was taking benadryl at the time yeah you, it makes you drowsy yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. So just simple antihistamines are very like potent mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy it's crazy and then um cte like i was saying they're like joe rogan brought this up that they're looking into psilocybin which is mushrooms because they found that mushroom psilocybins actually uh regrow uh neurotransmitters mm -hmm. so they're trying to see if it'll help heal ct and also like um it's good for mdma uh and mushrooms microdosing is really good and fast acting antidepressant as right. compared to over the counter antidepressants yeah, yeah, with yeah. so many um so many health issues mm -hmm. related to them and they take like up to two weeks to to work mm -hmm. like over the counter ones you right, have to yeah, keep yeah. taking them yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, like two weeks later you'll finally feel the effects but like if you take like psilocybin in a microdose or mdma where you don't get high you're just going to be happy it's it's like very effective mm -hmm. yeah fascinating right it's like yeah. i feel like we're opening up the world to a whole new way of health and wellness like taking care of ourselves yeah 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 uh, yeah especially reading that article seeing that i i think it's like um well it, it's the push of like finally legalizing marijuana that yeah, yeah totally it's come to light like let's look at other drugs too yeah for sure yeah, yeah. totally do. but it's funny how there's still stigma like i think it's gonna be like 50 to 100 years before the stigma is gone yeah it may, like yeah like it'll be more like our people in charge like, yeah you know what i mean like, well I, we're already in that zone in now, that zone but, or getting there's still like people who've but, been living like for years with with marijuana illegal right so yeah that, totally that's still but but there's still people even our age that like stigmatize yeah yeah, marijuana yeah there are. like yeah. oh are, are you like a pothead bro you mm -hmm. know and you're like mm -hmm. okay yeah true true yeah so i think it has to like it's like it's gonna take some time how come how come nobody says that about like whiskey <laughs> you know like i mean they say like are you an alcoholic but it's like like me cracking open a coors light as compared to me is really normal compared to if i just roll a fucking blunt yeah people are gonna be like what yeah what are you doing mm -hmm. it's like no they're both legal yeah but do you know what that can do to you it's like what this thing caused liver failure <laughs> yeah but we don't think about it because it's like it's been normalized yeah or we accept it yeah yeah which goes back to the kicking in the head ufc meme where it's like you have to always like like level up your perspective and your mm -hmm. paradigm or else you're stuck you know yeah that's the thing it's hard actually I mean, i've ever really sorry finish that thought and yeah it's, it's hard when people already have had um like made a, their own idea about it but like they're very hard it's very hard for people to change their mind on a certain totally topic. yeah yeah you have to be very humble in that aspect yes. of realizing that you don't know everything yeah a hundred percent people staunch in their beliefs are like screwed yeah so um on a personal note remember when we were younger uh, like like being homosexual being gay was like yeah. a really bad thing when we were when we were kids yeah, yeah, yeah. like i know it was like slowly progressing but it was still not progressing enough but now in 2021 my favorite character is uh, <laughs> david rose right, in right, right. schitt's creek you yeah, know what yeah. i mean and he's like yeah. openly gay but it's it's the it's not being staunch in your beliefs, being mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe I was wrong on this thing, right. you know? For me, it was learning that it was, it exists in the animal world. Yeah, so it's normal. That's what made it yeah. make sense to me. Yeah, for sure. But okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's only like, I mean, like, if you look in history too, like the Romans, they were no, no, totally true, cool true. with it. Yeah, that's true, yeah. No, no, what I'm saying, like, is it just a human thing? Yeah. That, that that was the whole thing, right? Uh, mm, yeah. When you're younger, you don't really understand that stuff. But then when you realize that it's, it's it exists in the animal kingdom, yeah, 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 as well. That's why I think it's weird. Like the talk about being staunch in your beliefs, like the Catholic Church vilified. They were like, "We're not going to mm -hmm. uh, okay gay marriage. Yeah, we're not going to bless it." Yeah, and it was just like, "Wow, you guys are really stuck in that old paradigm, eh?" Well, I mean, they're following the book, right? And the yeah, book but... is what it says, so. It, like if you're if you're already if you are really changing everything then why are you following the book yeah that's true fair that's yeah right so, i get that point <laughs> it, it goes for like mainly these three other religions do have that like yeah, yeah. you can't the be, abrahamic yeah. yeah 
Yeah. The whole point is, um, uh, is to make kids right to to grow their yeah. Their yeah, yeah. Mind, you know? So, but but they also say like love everyone. So it's like love everyone to a point. Yeah. So that, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why there's treat others contradictions. You... There there will be contradictions. So yeah. That's. No, there's there's limitations. limitations. It's or like limitations. treat sure. everyone how you want to be treated to a point. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. what they're talking about is necessarily your, your own type of people, treating your own type of people the same. Because you, yeah. you can also so they should have put take like, the sword on someone. Like there was some line like that too. They they should have put uh, footnotes at the <laughs> bottom of this and been like or asterisk. You know, they should have put the asterisk to next to every yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. be like this doesn't apply in these situations. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It, it, what's weird to me is seeing progressive religious people. I'm just like, pick a side, bro. Like, I don't get it. Like mm-hmm. when they're like, oh, like the the book says this, but I believe this. It's like, so you don't believe in the book? No, I do believe in the book, but it's a conflicting belief. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. just just jump, just make the jump. Be like, hey, this book's wrong. It is what it is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they there are like. Uh, gay priests I don't know exactly. how that so what happened to them <laughs> you know I'm not sure uh, that's that's a good question to ask I, right yeah if if the Pope is the direct link to God so then how come there are gay priests like you said mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're Catholic but yeah but still same, same yeah, yeah God, I understand man, what you're saying like, but on. they yeah I mean they also view differently if you're not Catholic like you're Oh yeah, like like Protestants yeah, and like yeah, all yeah. that stuff. But it's like small derivatives. Yeah. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Okay, so you're still in the same. Well, yeah, category. but they don't. They don't. Again, when you talk to them, yeah, we don't believe in a pope. We don't. You know. Like but I get. I get. Is it? I get it. If it's a cultural thing, like your religion thing, it's like it's just part of my. It's like being Jewish. You yeah. know, like people are like. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. That's, I mean, that's yeah. not how it is, though. That's what I say about my thing. Yeah. Oh, like you being Hindu. Yeah, but, you're but it's not more really Hindu, like a cult, it's it's a cultural thing, not really a religious thing. Yeah, you think there'll ever be a day when it's like Catholicism is, but I don't think so actually, because there's no one Catholic. <laughs> well, there is actually technically, if you really want to get into it, it's the Jews because, in the very like, if you actually read the Bible, yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. only about the um, Israelites, yeah, yeah. which renamed themselves to the Jews. Mm-hmm. Like literally, like literally in the beginning of that book, it's like we're the Israelites, and then at the end of the first, like the, um, the, Old Testament, at the end of it, they formalize themselves and call themselves Jews. We're now called Jews. Okay. And then freaking part two with Jesus is like the reformation of the Jews because the Jews got out of hand. So Jesus comes back. He's like, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" Mm-hmm. Like, because Jesus was also born a Jew. I think it wasn't it prophesized in the, in the Old Testament too that someone would come, but they didn't believe know. that Jesus was the prophesized one. But other people did. I, I don't know. That's like getting into the super weeds of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know because <laughs> like, I watch a lot of that. Stuff, I know so. like the higher level story because <laughs> I just read it as like a story, but I didn't like, I didn't like, like, um, overanalyze every single passage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, was yeah, just yeah. like, okay, this is a story. Read the story. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, crazy world. Foul thought fish. I mean, yeah, the world is an interesting place. Yeah, you have like great stories like Francis Ngannou, and then you have like weird stories like, like priests molesting little kids. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to them, bro? Like, come on, what are you doing, Pope? Get your people in line. Mm. I can say this because I'm Catholic. <laughs> yeah, so it's all good. Right. Yeah. Isn't it ironic that I wear the little cross bracelet then? When I, but I mean, like, my uncle gave me that, so it has been sentimental value. But I think it's just really funny that I wear like a cross bracelet. Sure, yeah. I mean, it, but the symbol means different to you than what it means. So yeah, to yeah totally. Else. Yeah. So that means I can talk smack because I have a bracelet with Jesus. I should on wear it. like a swastika because <laughs> it means different to me. <laughs> just... <laughs> No, dude, dude, dude. It is you different. Can't. No, 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 no. Yeah. Wait, wait, no, no. I, I laughed, but you're actually correct. Because in Japan and in Hinduism, they have this one. Yeah, together. exactly. Yeah. But no, but the difference <laughs> is that. Just don't Hitler, tilt it. Yeah, just don't, no, tilt, just don't it. tilt it. Hilt, Hitler tilted it to the side. <laughs> yeah. But the swastika was a symbol for power. Right. In Japan and in 
Um, yeah, yeah. Only I'm, difference that yeah that uh, he copyrighted was it tilted. Yeah, tilted. yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah, but it meant power, so he was like trying to go for that. Right. right. But, uh, but actually, did you know? Uh, I know we're going tangents here, but like, did you know that Hitler was actually into the occult? That's how he knew about the power symbol. Oh yeah, like that's an occult symbol. Like <laughs> occult meaning it's a, like it, yeah, it's esoteric. It's, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I was like, I think this is a symbol I see all the time, and like in India or like in, yeah. in, in on Buddhist, yeah, yeah. Buddhist statues on, and things yeah. like that. Actually, you know what tripped me out? I was reading this anime Naruto, and they showed um, the so this character Neji, he has a symbol on his forehead. And it was a swastika. Mm-hmm. But swastika is not the actual term, is it? Is the actual name swastika? Yeah. Oh, okay. So then how do you differentiate swastika between like Hitler's swastika? I don't know. I still call it swastika. Okay. So is this, is, Well, they just call it Nazis. I don't know. I don't know. Like, okay. Yeah, well, because cause yeah. when, when I think I read a story, it was a while, a long time ago. It was like someone in America had that. Cause it was like I think Diwali time or something like that. Oh, okay. And they had that on the door, and they didn't. People didn't understand. Oh, people were tripping out. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was so go back to the story when I was reading the manga of it. The character Neji, he takes off his headband because he's always wearing one, right? To like unleash his power or oh, whatever. Yeah. And on his forehead is a swastika, and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and then that's when I had to Google it and be like, oh, it's not actually. Exactly. It's yeah. like it's in Japanese culture mm-hmm. and in. Indian culture. Well, yeah, in the Asian culture, in in that area. Well, I wouldn't say like Filipinos don't have that symbol. Like true, true. Yeah, I don't even know. Chinese. In the Buddhist. Yeah, yeah in Buddhist. in the, um, it is a Buddhist thing. Buddhist and Hindu thing. Yeah. Uh, whatever whatever they call it, those types of religions. But I mean, like technically, Dharmic it, religions. Uh, that's what you call it. I don't know. That's cool. No, because like Hindu Buddhism came from Hinduism, so that that obviously makes sense <laughs> that they're using the same symbol because. Uh, Siddhartha. Well, the symbol just means something. It's not. It's not like. You no, know no, no, what I mean? but, but, but I mean, nothing like, to do with the religion necessarily. No, no, totally. But, but I mean, like, that's why they're in the two things. Because like, Japan's known for Buddhism, and China, um, India is known for Hinduism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Siddhartha was a Hindu. Yeah. And then he became Buddha, mm-hmm. and then he spawned Buddhism. Yeah. So of course he would have the same symbols. Yeah. Like that's why both cultures have the symbol of the swastika. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's why I always found it funny, because I knew that already coming into learning about the Nazis. Oh yeah. yeah. So it was like, is it? Yeah. It, yeah for totally. me, it, I like, think I had this like this? on Facebook too. It's like all the, actually all the 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 derivation the, um, the, the derivatives of the swastika. Like, oh, there are different ones. There is. I don't know what I mean. Is like these symbols change to something else. Even like like the cross is a version with the, oh, the yeah, legs yeah, yeah. True, true, true. with yeah. the other parts. Yeah. 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 When you look into like anthropology, like we're, we're like tangentially looking at, <laughs> into it, like superficially looking yeah, at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure like anthropologists know all this craziness that we don't even know. Mm. Cause like it's the study of humans, right? right like, right, right. yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's lots we don't know too. Yeah. True. Yeah. And lots that if we did know, we'd probably blow up our heads. <laughs> Like with the Deutsche Bank thing, blew my mind. I was like, "What is going on?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Actually, wait, sorry, sorry. Final thing, final thing with the Deutsche Bank thing because I thought about this. So they, one interesting story is that um, they were they were caught for money laundering, and they were like, "Oh no, the Feds are going to give us a hundred million dollar fine." The Feds were just like, "You guys got to tighten up your money laundering system." <laughs> so it's like, okay, what? You just let them get away with it then, bro. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what blew my thing. mind. I was like, yeah. what? Dude, you just got caught, but nothing. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's just a warning. They do it again. I don't know. Yes, well, it's later not... on, they did get, They actually got fined because they kept doing it. Yeah. So, uh, so there's a point. To, yeah, there's a certain... I, don't, I guess it depends on who's in charge, who's the leader. If they've paid off that leader, True. then they're yeah, yeah. not really they, going to get... They they have um they have a um oh that's that's our signal to stop but they they have a uh they have a motto you could do it once but not three times <laughs> right yeah, as is in the book kind of like, oh. like the three strike rule yeah 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 exactly yeah, yeah. totally all right till next time Vish we yep. expect some Winter Soldier for next week mm-hmm. I'm excited that's gonna be our thing sure all right Daisy peace.
Ba. All right. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all those fun things, and check out our sponsors: Zenro Clothing Co., Portion Bakery, and Podbean. Take it easy, fish. Peace.